Hello dear and respected family of this channel. On this channel we will look at and explore a variety of amazing events, facts and phenomena stay with us until the end of our program you can become a family by subscribing to this great channel and also press this bell icon. Today we talked and explore about history of photography. History of photography The history of photography began in remote antiquity with the discovery of two critical principles, camera obscura image projection and the observation that some substances are visibly altered by exposure to light. There are no artifacts or descriptions that indicate any attempt to capture images with light-sensitive materials prior to the 18th century. Around 1717, Johann Heinrich Schultz captured cut-out letters on a bottle of a light-sensitive slurry, but he apparently never thought of making the results durable. Around 1800, Thomas Wedgwood made the first reliably documented, although unsuccessful attempt at capturing camera images in permanent form. His experiments did produce detailed photograms, but, Wedgwood and his associate Humphrey Davy found no way to fix these images. In the mid-1820s, Misafor Niepce first managed to fix an image that was captured with a camera, but at least eight hours or even several days of exposure in the camera were required. And the earliest results were very crude. Niepce's associate Louis Daguerre went on to develop the daguerreotype process, the first publicly announced and commercially viable photographic process. The daguerreotype required only minutes of exposure in the camera, and produced clear, finely detailed results. The details were introduced to the world in 1839, a date generally accepted as the birth year of practical photography. The metal-based daguerreotype process soon had some competition from the paper-based calotype negative and salt print processes. Invented by William Henry Fox Talbot and demonstrated in 1839 soon after news about the daguerreotype reached Talbot. Subsequent innovations made photography easier and more versatile. New materials reduced the required camera exposure time from minutes to seconds. And eventually to a small fraction of a second, new photographic media were more economical, sensitive or convenient. Since the 1850s, the collodion process with its glass-based photographic plates combined the high quality known from the daguerreotype with the multiple print options known from the calotype and was commonly used for decades. Roll films popularized casual use by amateurs. In the mid-20th century, developments made it possible for amateurs to take pictures in natural color as well as in black and white. The commercial introduction of computer-based electronic digital cameras in the 1990s soon revolutionized photography. During the first decade of the 21st century, traditional film-based photochemical methods were increasingly marginalized as the practical advantages of the new technology became widely appreciated and the image quality of moderately priced digital cameras was continually improved. Especially since cameras became a standard feature on smartphones, taking pictures, and instantly publishing them online, has become a ubiquitous everyday practice around the world. Etymology The coining of the word, photography, is usually attributed to Sir John Herschel in 1839. It is based in the Greek phos, phos genitive, photos meaning, light, and graphi, graphi meaning, drawing, writing, together meaning, drawing with light. Early history of the camera and natural phenomenon, known as camera obscura or pinhole image, can project a reversed image through a small opening onto an opposite surface. This principle may have been known and used in prehistoric times. The earliest known written record of the camera obscura is to be found in Chinese writings by Mozi, dated to the 4th century BCE. Until the 16th century the camera obscura was mainly used to study optics and astronomy, especially to safely watch solar eclipses without damaging the eyes. In the later half of the 16th century some technical improvements were developed. A Bickenbeck's lens in the opening first described by Gerolamo Cardano in 1550, and a diaphragm restricting the aperture, Daniel Barbaro in 1568 gave a brighter and sharper image. In 1558 Giambattista della Porta advised using the camera obscura as a drawing aid in his popular and influential books. 
Delaporta's advice was widely adopted by artists and since the 17th century portable versions of the camera obscura were commonly used. First as a tent, later as boxes. The box-type camera obscura was the basis for the earliest photographic cameras when photography was developed in the early 19th century. Before 1700, light-sensitive materials. The notion that light can affect various substances, for instance, the suntanning of skin or fading of textile, must have been around since very early times. Ideas of fixing the images seen in mirrors or other ways of creating images automatically may also have been in people's minds. Long before anything like photography was developed. However, there seem to be no historical records of any ideas even remotely resembling photography before 1700, despite early knowledge of light-sensitive materials and the camera obscura. In 1614 Angelo Sala noted that sunlight will turn powdered silver nitrate black, and that paper wrapped around silver nitrate for a year will turn black. Wilhelm Homburg described how light darkened some chemicals in 1694. 1700 to 1802, earliest concepts and fleeting photogram results Schulz's Escotophorus, earliest fleeting letter photograms, circa 1717. Around 1717, German polymath Johann Heinrich Schultz accidentally discovered that a slurry of chalk and nitric acid into which some silver particles had been dissolved was darkened by sunlight. After experiments with threads that had created lines on the bottled substance after he placed it in direct sunlight for a while, he applied stencils of words to the bottle. The stencils produced copies of the text in dark red, almost violet characters on the surface of the otherwise whitish contents. The impressions persisted until they were erased by shaking the bottle or until overall exposure to light obliterated them. Schultz named the substance, Scotophorus, when he published his findings in 1719. He thought the discovery could be applied to detect whether metals or minerals contained any silver and hoped that further experimentation by others would lead to some other useful results. Schulz's process resembled later photogram techniques and is sometimes regarded as the very first form of photography. De La Roque's fictional image capturing process, 1760. The early science fiction novel Gifanti, 1760, by the Frenchman Tiffane de La Roche, describes something quite similar to color photography, a process that fixes fleeting images formed by rays of light. They coat a piece of canvas with this material, and place it in front of the object to capture. The first effect of this cloth is similar to that of a mirror, but by means of its viscous nature the prepared canvas, as is not the case with the mirror, retains a facsimile of the image. The mirror represents images faithfully, but retains none, our canvas reflects them no less faithfully, but retains them all. This impression of the image is instantaneous. The canvas is, then removed and deposited in a dark place. An hour later the impression is dry, and you have a picture the more precious in that no art can imitate its truthfulness. De La Roche thus imagined a process that made use of a special substance in combination with the qualities of a mirror, rather than the camera obscura. The hour of drying in a dark place suggests that he possibly thought about the light sensitivity of the material, but he attributed the effect to its viscous nature. Shields Forgotten Chemical Fixer, 1777. In 1777, the chemist Carl Wilhelm Scheele was studying the more intrinsically light-sensitive silver chloride and determined that light darkened it by disintegrating it into microscopic dark particles of metallic silver. Of greater potential usefulness, Scheele found that ammonia dissolved the silver chloride, but not the dark particles. This discovery could have been used to stabilize or fix a camera image captured with silver chloride, but was not picked up by the earliest photography experimenters. Scheel also noted that red light did not have much effect on silver chloride, a phenomenon that would later be applied in photographic darkrooms as a method of seeing black and white prints without harming their development. Although Thomas Wedgwood felt inspired by Scheel's writings in general, he must have missed or forgotten these experiments, he found no method to fix the photogram and shadow images. He managed to capture around 1800. Thomas Wedgwood and Humphrey Davy, 
Fleeting detailed photograms, 1790-1802. English photographer and inventor Thomas Wedgwood is believed to have been the first person to have thought of creating permanent pictures by capturing camera images on material coated with a light-sensitive chemical. He originally wanted to capture the images of a camera obscura, but found they were too faint to have an effect upon the silver nitrate solution that was recommended to him as a light-sensitive substance. Wedgwood did manage to copy painted glass plates and captured shadows on white leather, as well as on paper moistened with a silver nitrate solution. Attempts to preserve the results with their distinct tints of brown or black, sensibly differing in intensity, failed. It is unclear when Wedgwood's experiments took place. He may have started before 1790. James Watt wrote a letter to Thomas Wedgwood's father Josiah Wedgwood to thank him for your instructions as to the silver pictures, about which, when at home, I will make some experiments. This letter, now lost, is believed to have been written in 1790, 1791 or 1799. In 1802, an account by Humphrey Davy detailing Wedgwood's experiments was published in an early journal of the Royal Institution with the title and account of a method of copying paintings upon glass, and of making profiles, by the agency of light upon nitrate of silver. Davy added that the method could be used for objects that are partly opaque and partly transparent to create accurate representations of, for instance, the woody fibers of leaves and the wings of insects. He also found that solar microscope images of small objects were easily captured on prepared paper. Davy, apparently unaware or forgetful of Scheele's discovery, concluded that substances should be found to eliminate or deactivate the unexposed particles in silver nitrate or silver chloride, to render the process as useful as it is elegant. Wedgwood may have prematurely abandoned his experiments because of his frail and failing health. He died at age 34 in 1805. Davy seems not to have continued the experiments. Although the journal of the nascent Royal Institution probably reached its very small group of members, the article must have been read eventually by many more people. It was reviewed by David Brewster in the Edinburgh Magazine in December 1802, appeared in chemistry textbooks as early as 1803, was translated into French and was published in German in 1811. Readers of the article may have been discouraged to find a fixer, because the highly acclaimed scientist Davy had already tried and failed. Apparently the article was not noted by Niepce or Daguerre, and by Talbot only after he had developed his own processes. Jacques Charles. Fleeting silhouette photograms, circa 1801. French balloonist, professor and inventor Jacques Charles is believed to have captured fleeting negative photograms of silhouettes on light-sensitive paper at the start of the 19th century, prior to Wedgwood. Charles died in 1823 without having documented the process, but purportedly demonstrated it in his lectures at the Louvre. It was not publicized until François Arago mentioned it at his introduction of the details of the daguerreotype to the world in 1839. He later wrote that the first idea of fixing the images of the camera obscura or the solar microscope with chemical substances belonged to Charles. Later historians probably only built on Arago's information, and, much later, the unsupported year 1780 was attached to it. 21 as Arago indicated the first years of the 19th century and a date prior to the 1802 publication of Wedgwood's process, this would mean that Charles's demonstrations took place in 1800 or 1801. Assuming that Arago was this accurate almost 40 years later, Development of digital photography in 1957, a team led by Russell A. Kirsch at the National Institute of Standards and Technology developed a binary digital version of an existing technology, the wire photo drum scanner, so that alphanumeric characters, diagrams, photographs and other graphics could be transferred into digital computer memory. One of the first photographs scanned was a picture of Kirsch's infant son Walden. The resolution was 176 x 176 pixels with only one bit per pixel, i.e., stark black and white with no intermediate gray tones, but by combining multiple scans of the photograph done with different black-white threshold settings, grayscale information could also be acquired. 
The charge coupled device CCD is the image capturing optoelectric component in first generation digital cameras. It was invented in 1969 by Willard Boyle and George E. Smith at AT&T Bell Labs as a memory device. The lab was working on the picture phone and on the development of semiconductor bubble memory. Merging these two initiatives, Boyle and Smith conceived of the design of what they termed charge bubble devices. The essence of the design was the ability to transfer charge along the surface of a semiconductor. It was Dr. Michael Thompson from Bell Labs however, who discovered that the CCD could be used as an imaging sensor. The CCD has increasingly been replaced by the Active Pixel Sensor APS, commonly used in cell phone cameras. These mobile phone cameras are used by billions of people worldwide, dramatically increasing photographic activity and material and also fueling citizen journalism. Minus 1973 Fairchild Semiconductor releases the first large image capturing CCD chip, 100 rows and 100 columns. Minus 1975 Bryce Bear of Kodak develops the Bear filter mosaic pattern for CCD color image. Sensors minus 1986 Kodak scientists develop the world's first megapixel sensor. The web has been a popular medium for storing and sharing photos ever since the first photograph was published on the web by Tim Berners-Lee in 1992, an image of the CERN house. Banned less horrible CERNets. Since then sites and apps such as Facebook, Flickr, Instagram, Picasa discontinued in 2016, Imager and Photobucket have been used by many millions of people to share their pictures. Stereoscopic photography Charles Wheatstone developed his mirror stereoscope around 1832, but did not really publicize his invention until June 1838. He recognized the possibility of a combination with photography. Soon after Daguerre and Talbot announced their inventions and got Henry Fox Talbot to produce some calotype pairs for the stereoscope. He received the first results in October 1840, but was not fully satisfied as the angle between the shots was very big. Between 1841 and 1842 Henry. Colin made calotypes of statues, buildings and portraits, including a portrait of Charles Babbage shot in August 1841. Wheatstone also obtained daguerreotype stereograms from Mr. Beard in 1841 and from Hippolyte Fizeau and Antoine Claudet in 1842. None of these have yet been located. David Brewster developed a stereoscope with lenses and a binocular camera in 1844. He presented two stereoscopic self-portraits made by John Adamson in March 1849. A stereoscopic portrait of Adamson in the University of St. Andrew's Library Photographic Archive, dated, circa 1845, may be one of these sets. A stereoscopic daguerreotype portrait of Michael Faraday in Kingston College's Wheatstone Collection and on loan to Bradford National Media Museum, dated, circa 1848, may be older. Thank you for attending our program show us your partnership by liking and sharing our informative video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel.